Hello and good day, everyone. My name is Jelly Victor, your host for today for Grab Philippines presentation and panel discussion for Philippine Startup Week 2020. How is everyone doing? Do say hi. You know, we've got a comment section. If you haven't familiarized yourself with it, then make use of it right now. Take advantage. Say hello. You never know. You might actually be attending this event with somebody you do know. And the only way you'll find out is by making use of the comment section. So let us know who you are, where you are checking in from, because we would love to hear from you. You know, it's always a great feeling to uh, actually connect with like-minded individuals from all over the Philippines and maybe even the rest of the world. So again, wherever it is that you may be, let us know and we hope that you are safe and well. Now, let's talk about what we have in store for you today, shall we? Grab's theme today focuses on recovering together through innovation and technology. And we are very excited to kick off this momentous event with all of you every single one of you. It is not often that startups and businesses from all over the country can come together in order to facilitate deeper learning and inspire Filipinos to address our nation's most pressing issues. Now, it is apparent that with this pandemic, the economic activity of the country has been affected on all fronts as businesses and communities have been forced to adjust to the new reality. Through this session, we are looking to, a, to get a deeper understanding of how technology continues to be a driving force that lets the community recover together in challenging times. Again, we are all going to recover together. We're going to work together in this and perhaps even thrive moving forward. To get things started, because I'm in no position to welcome all of you to our event, I would like to introduce our keynote speaker who will be talking about the company's commitment to inspire recovery among our kababayans through its different innovations and interventions. Ladies and gentlemen, a virtual round of applause. Paano ba yon? Ganito? From wherever you are, please give it up for the country head of Grab Philippines, Miss Grace Veracruz. Hello everyone and good afternoon. We are pleased that you have come to join us in our session as we share our insights on how technology and digitalization can help our communi communities recover safely and inclusively. I am Grace Vera Cruz, the country head of the Philippines for Grab. In a matter of weeks, we have been forced to change our ways of life. We have been asked to stay home, practice social distancing, and adapt to new ways of living to be able to protect ourselves and our loved ones. It is also undeniable that this pandemic has come at a high cost for everyone. Many businesses have closed. This has led to many of our kababayans unemployed, forcing our economy to be in recession, along with many of our neighbors in Southeast Asia. These are tough times, but what we know for sure is that our collective Bayanihan spirit, technology, and digitalization, we will be able to bounce back. What I would like to do is share four trends that we observe as a result of the pandemic. Number one, permanent changes in consumer behavior. Consumers are likely to remain cautious about venturing out even after the lockdowns end. We expect many customers to stay within the comfort and safety of their homes, while our kababayans who need to perform essential services and activities outside will require for a safe, hygienic, and reliable mode of transportation. Safety and hygiene will remain an important consideration for many of our fellow countrymen as we work towards economic recovery. Number two. Strong reliance on digital channels to consume services and do remote work. Demand for digital services, cashless payments, and deliveries will remain elevated, which means that more new businesses will be digital first, and those that are not online will need to digitalize even more to survive. This is where we need to help small businesses and micro-entrepreneurs by providing them with digital tools 
trainings, and solutions so that through technology, they can better reach and serve their customers and grow their businesses. In particular, platforms will play a significant role in providing livelihood for many Filipinos. As many of our Kababayans look for alternative sources of income amidst the rising unemployment rate, tech platforms will remain as a reliable solution for the work hours, uh, flexibility, meaningful livelihood opportunities, and skills training that they offer. Number three, a move towards DIY. We believe social distancing will encourage both consumers and businesses to do things themselves through self-service platforms and solutions. And lastly, the continuous search for value. As we are currently experiencing economic recession, many of our Kababayans are looking for services and offerings that would help maximize their hard-earned peso. Given that, value of, for money will be top of mind for any consumer spend. Now that we see these trends, let me tell you about what we are doing at Grab. Number one, we launched Grab Protect. Safety remains a key foundation in everything we do at Grab. Through our technology and partnerships, we have introduced Grab Protect, a robust set of features and solutions across the Grab platform in the aim of enforcing higher safety hygiene standards for public transport and delivery in the country. Through Grab Protect program, we have introduced online health and hygiene checks for our driver partners, automated ratings and feedback for both driver partners and customers to ensure that we are abiding by the public health policy of the government. Through Grab Protect, we have also enabled, enabled online driver safety retraining to ensure that our driver partners fully understand the safety and hygiene protocols needed for them to serve our communities. We at Grab have also partnered with the National Task Force Against COVID and the BCDA to provide free RT-PCR swab tests to all our drivers and delivery partners to ensure that they are safe and healthy while providing essential services to everyone. Furthermore, through Grab Protect, we are able to build confidence that every Grab service everyone takes, whether it's transportation or deliveries, are safe and hygienic. And we are helping raise the bar on safety while improving the livelihoods of small businesses, micro entrepreneurs, and driver partners across our platform. For our merchants, we facilitate online storefronts through GrabPay and launch our do-it-yourself platform called Grab Merchant. We would like to continue helping MSMEs grow their revenues. How? We have created an offline to online platform with Grab Pay to help offline businesses set up their online storefronts through a landing page on grab.com. Once the online storefront is built, merchants can activate Grab Pay Checkout as an option for payments. Set Grab Merchant is our all-in-one self-service merchant platform. It has all the critical tools that a small business needs to unlock maximum value from the Grab platform. This product suite enables and includes a newly designed app that enables day-to-day -day operations for the store and provides growth tools for micro-businesses. A portal for SME and large chains to get a 360 view across their store network and make better decisions to drive, drive growth. In the near future, merchants can also apply for financial products via Grab Merchant. Homegrown Heroes. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, we've been actively finding ways to increase the visibility of local businesses on our platform to drive more demand to their stores. The Homegrown Heroes initiative will see Grab creating personalized ads for over 1,000 small Grab Food and Grab Express merchant partners in the Philippines, featuring them on the most prominent spaces on the Grab app. Last but not least, we have launched our Madiscarting Boss Club, our community of hardworking social sellers in the Philippines, whereby we provide them with the necessary tech-based tools, trainings, and solutions to grow their businesses in the digital-first economy. 
We leverage our platform to provide livelihood opportunities too. We have constantly conducted virtual town halls and community check-ins to help our driver partners cope and adapt to the many changes brought about by the pandemic and natural disasters. In fact, we also do meetings now via Zoom. On the 29th of, no of November, we invite everybody to celebrate Araw ng Tagapaghatid for all our driver partners, not just the ones from Grab. We have worked closely with the Department of Labor and Employment and various local government units to onboard many of our displaced Kababayans to become delivery partners. Last but not least, we have recently created services like Grab Express Pabili and Grab Mart that provide our customers access to basic needs in these trying times. Within days of the lockdown, Grab was able to introduce a new service, Grab Express Pabili, to help buy daily necessities such as medicine and other essentials for those unable to leave their homes, most especially our senior citizens and PWDs. Grab was also able to serve more household and communities it continues, as it continues to expand to Iloilo, Davao, Pampanga, Bacolod, Dumaguete, Lipa, and Zamboanga, and to more cities as we go through the next few months. In a time where queuing for groceries and malls might be challenging to many, we launched Grab Mart. Now, users can simply shop for their groceries online without leaving the comfort and safety of their homes. Grab has also made cashless payments more convenient and secure for those staying at home as it, as it expands Grab Pay to uh, more merchants. Through Grab's tech innovation, users can now pay their bills, send money to their loved ones, or pay for food and parcel delivery straight from the Grab app on their mobile phones. While we have the road of recovery ahead of us, it's very long, but I am confident that by working together, we can build a stronger and more resilient economy. And it starts with every single one of us fully embracing technology digitalization and unlocking its many opportunities. To our startups and tech entrepreneurs, let us not lose sight of the task ahead of us to use our technology, expertise, and resources to deliver positive socioeconomic impact, especially during these challenging times. We have a lot of work to do, but I am confident that by working together and helping one another as one strong tech community, we can overcome these challenges and come out stronger. Grab, for sure, will continue to be an enduring partner to our communities, and we will continue to leverage on our technology to provide tools solutions and services that would help co-create economic recovery for our kababayans. Maraming salamat po sa patuloy niyong pagsuporta at pagtitiwala sa Grab. Magandang hapon. Thank you very much for that insightful presentation, Miss Grace. Wow. You know what, indeed, um, when I was doing the introduction earlier and I was talking about we, how we will all have to work together and who knows, we might just thrive moving forward. I believe that is definitely possible, especially with Grab helping us out with the Grab Pabile, with the Grab Mart Express. You know, when uh, Miss Grace was talking about Grab Protect, I did notice that because every time I have my deliveries now, um, when the Grab rider hands me the package, whatever it is that I'm receiving, he would spray my hand and he would spray the package. And I was very impressed with that. And initially, I thought that that was just an, the initiative of the rider. But now I realize it is part and parcel of Grab doing what they can to ensure the protection of not just the riders, the drivers, the passengers, and everyone else. And that is absolutely amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, virtual applause, please, for Grab. And I know exactly what you're thinking. It's like I can see your thought bubble right there. There were a few points that Miss Grace mentioned that definitely piqued your interest, like the Madiscarting Boss Club. What is that all about? You want to be a part of it, don't you? Well, don't you worry, because that is coming up very, very soon. We've got a panelist who will talk about exactly that and 
all the other benefits of making sure that you have gone digital with your businesses. Remember Miss Grace's uh, point. She said, if you are, uh, it's digital first. And if you don't have digital presence, then you're going to have to do it and get into it. We are uh, going to give you insights on what happens when you do go digital and you make use of all the tech platforms. Now, I think one word that comes to mind to summarize the efforts that Ms. Grace described is actually bayanihan, a concept that is familiar to all Filipinos. Especially when navigating these unique times, it is inspiring to know that one platform can actually touch the lives of so many drivers, users, and merchants. It connects all of us. All of us are tied in with Grab. With this, we would like to introduce our panelists who can talk about these developments firsthand and explain what recovery means to them in their respective roles with Grab. Joining us for our panel today, we've got one of our Grab car driver partners, Mr. Tino Salvador. We are also honored to be joined by the Dream Coffee founder and CEO, Ms. Larissa Hoson. And last but certainly not the least, we've got a Grab user since 2018 who can discuss more about how fellow users can communicate or can contribute to MSMEs and their community. We've also got Ms. Gabby Desales. Hello to all of you. Hi, Jelly. Thanks Hi. for watching us. Hi, Gabby. Hi, Larissa. Hi, Jelly. Hi. <laughs> Tinan niyo naman, si Mr. Tino na sa loob talaga ng sasakyan. <laughs> I know. <laughs> ready, ready to go. No, no, it's the best place. Silent. Oh, that's true. No, but I like how he says it. It's the best place. It's silent for him. That's... um. That's probably what helped him out during the pandemic. We will hear more stories in just a little bit, but why don't you introduce yourselves to everyone who is watching right now? Maybe you can start with, you know, your age, how long you've been with Grab and how your life has been with Grab. We'll start with you. Um, let's start with you, Larissa. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, to everyone watching Philippine Startup Week, hello. My name is Larissa, Larissa Hoson. I am 29 years old and I'm currently here um, at home, as most of us are, uh, in Paranaque. Uh, I started the Dream Coffee in 2018, and it's actually an enterprise that I work on with 75 coffee farmers and their families from Teboli, which is a municipality, and it's also the name of an indigenous tribe in South Cotabato. So I've been working with them for, actually it's been uh, more than two years since we started piloting um, the product and the business. And I've also been a merchant with Grab Food since 2019. And just this year, I got to be a part of the Madiscarting Boss Club, which Miss Grace and Jelly mentioned a while ago. You know what? I'm pretty sure a lot of people are say, thinking, Alin, ano yun? Ano yung madiscarding boss club? So I'll throw the question over to you. Tell us a little bit more about MBC and what it's all about. What got you interested to be a part of it? So I know it sounds um, a bit tired. Oh, wow, that's a club. But it's actually a very inclusive group. And it's Grab's way of reaching out to micro, small, and medium um, enterprises to really help them get their businesses going and to equip them with, for example, cost incentives or even um, information that they need to continue doing business at this time. Um, since being a part of MBC, I've had access to, for example, price off on deliveries or even flat rates. And this makes it so much easier to reach out to my customers and yeah. allow me to do business with them better. And just recently also, MBC has started to, to provide different um, webinars and resources like how it's like to do business in the new normal or how to use social media to do business at this time. And it just, again, it just makes it easier for someone who's just starting out to get into it and start doing business right now. I, I, I'm loving the support that you're getting from being part of this club. You know, it's nice that you said it's inclusive. Um, even though you said club, 
does it sound intimidating? Actually, on the contrary, it sounds very inviting. Na parang, I want to be part of that club. Thank yeah. you, Marika. We'll move on over to Gabby. Hey, Gabby. Hi, Jelly. And thank you guys for joining us in Philippine Startup Week. So I'm Gabby Desales. I am 22 years old, um, currently residing in Marikina City. So um, I used to work in PR, public, public relations. Um, and re just recently, um, I launched two brands. Um, so I launched Skin Therapy, which um, specializes in skincare products, um, mostly on hand products, since we're washing our hands frequently nowadays. So it really dries up a lot. And um, on the side, I also started a brand um, for sandals. So um, those two brands transpired um, during the pandemic season. So I really made use of um, the lockdown to start up um, a small business. So actually hearing about MBC, um, I'm actually interested. Maybe I can also try it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, it seems like a good platform um, since also Larissa mentioned that it was very inclusive. Um, so I've been a loyal Grab user for two years. I think actually more than two years. Um, everything that I do here at home for my business, Everything talaga is delivered. Everything is online. Um, I really don't go out of the house um, in as much as I can. So, um, yeah, every, everything talaga is online for me. You know, there's this saying that mm -hmm. in every every crisis, there is always an opportunity. You kind of just need to look at the collateral beauty that is part of that um, crisis. And I think in your case, Gabby, nakita mo talaga yon. Kasi amidst the pandemic, you saw a business opportunity. <laughs> like that is ingenious to realize that people are washing their hands a lot more often than before. Magda dryan here, skin therapy for you. <laughs> Galing! <laughs> Yes, definitely. <laughs> Very impressive, Gabby. All right, we are now going to move on to the only thorn amongst the roses, or baka siya yung rose, kasi you're about to hear exactly why we think he's a an um, amazing rose. Hi, Tino. Uh, hello. Good morning. Good morning, Tino. Tell us all about you, what city you're from, what is your life all about, what what is it like to be a Grab driver? Okay, um, I would like to share a lot, but Go um, right I'm ahead. Florent Florentino Salvador, and they call me Tino Salvador, and I'm from Marikina. Oh. Um, okay, I have six kids, and I also have two adopted ones, so a total of eight. So you can just imagine how many... Uh, show um people eat inside the house <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, so um in terms of my age i'm 45 so still too young yes and um, still have a healthy body here and um, i can endure 24 hours of uh doing trips for grab wow. which is so rewarding mm. this is the type of field that where you can maximize your earning capacity. Mm. It's not like you work eight hours and sit down and I've earned enough and go home and sleep. With me, I drive until I lose power on the road and mm. then pull over and then mm. do a power nap. And then after the power nap, go back to driving again. Okay na naman. <laughs> yes. And also... Um, I'm also a driver leader for the uh, eastern part of Grab, and that entails so much responsibility. Thank you. Thank you, Tino. Very well said. But out of curiosity, Tino, gano katagal ka na bang Grab driver, and what made you decide to be a Grab driver? Well, I've been with Grab for almost four years. Okay. And um, way back. I was um, working for uh, a BPO industry, and during that time, I had six kids, so my salary wasn't enough. Mm. So I tried driving for uh, TNVS or service for Grab, mm. and um, my surprise was, well, I have edged out most likely the others because I was used to not sleeping at night. I know how to manage my sleeping, uh, um, my body clock, I know it. Mm. So I drive and drive until I lose power. 
And then after one week, I was surprised to have earned my one month pay in one week. Wow. So, so uh, I decided to um, file another leave again and then drive for seven days. And then a surpri- at a surprise, I was able to pay a lot of bills. And uh, this is really for me. Okay. You know, you know, when you talk about driving and, um, you know, conquering the, the full day driving and then realizing that you made more in one week, what you've made in a month, it actually surpassed driving within just one week. One can already tell how much you're really loving and enjoying being a grab driver. We can sense the passion in how you say it, the way you say it, and exactly what you say. It's interesting too kasi I've come across drivers pag nakikipagchikahan ako sa mga grab driver ko nababanggit nga nila na ang maganda sa pagiging grab driver ang kikitain mo dependent lang talaga sa effort mo parang it's always commensurate so if you put in a lot of effort you make a whole lot more. So if you don't make much as a grab driver nasa sayo na talaga yan. It's, it's your own yeah. doing. Tama? Yes. And that's precisely um a portion of it but okay. when you said earlier loving the job and uh, you put your heart into what you're doing it's like you're used to when you're used to doing hard stuff and then when things go rough it's like a walk in the park for you like mm. what's happening right now Okay. Sinimulan mo na rin, Tino. Parang sinegway mo na yung susunod kong tanong. Kasi, since you're already talking about the hard stuff, the difficulty, let's get into the situation for everyone when the pandemic hit. All of a sudden, we are stuck at home. We cannot go out. Um, I can just imagine the kind of problems you encountered. But let's start with the dream coffee. Since your business was already in existence prior to the pandemic, what was your experience, mo, Larissa? So um, actually, what I hear from a lot of people who, a lot of businesses, almost all who were affected by the pandemic is, Um, There was kind of like this panic mode um, when it comes to wanting to switch online because that was, and that still is um, one of the main ways we get in touch um, with our customers right now. Mm. Um, But when I started the Dream Coffee in 2018, it was just super important to me to be online. Um, A lot of people might think like, oh, bakakasi na for seem when I on. Maybe a part of it was that, but a lot of it was also, it was just so much more cost efficient to do business online. So I didn't have to think about, you know, setting up like a shop and paying rent and, you know, having problems with my lease. Um, I could just do that all from wherever I was. And if I had my laptop and my phone, I could just continue to sell and um, and be online. Um, And so when it comes to doing that pivot about going online, honestly, that wasn't um, the main pain point for us. What was though, was um, really a logistical issue and also a customer interaction issue. Like I mentioned a while ago, Jelly, our beans are harvested and processed by our farmers in South Cotabato. Mm -hmm. And these aren't, you know, the big cities in their region. These are very small, far-flung communities in the mountains. So as it is, it is already, um, there is logistical difficulty to get mm-hmm. the beans from South Cotabata into from Tibali to, to Metro Manila, where we do the roasting. When ECQ happened, all the more this became difficult um, because of restrictions and all these checkpoints. So it just had to happen that for about a month and a half, we weren't operating because we couldn't get our main good outside of, of where it comes from. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I just want to echo what Sertina said. When you're used to doing a lot of difficult work, Um, When troubles come your way, it just becomes so much, not easier, but you become more steadfast in overcoming them. And Mm -hmm. so that was it for us. That was the attitude. It was like, okay, fine, we're going to wait this out. But eventually, we'll have to find a way to get the beans from Mindanao to Metro Manila. Eventually, that happened. Um, And one of the main signals also for me personally, um, as an entrepreneur, to really get the business back going is seeing that there were more and more people going on the road 
mm-hmm. um, doing business safely. And it was just so crucial to see for me, like on-demand couriers, like grab riders, go mm-hmm. back on the road and, and become a main tool for me to get the goods to the customers. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, like I, I, I know you mentioned a while ago about like all these safety things, contactless, cashless um, tools and uh, th- that was so helpful for me to get uh, to to interact and to to reach out to my customers again, even with all of these logistical troubles um, yeah. that happened. You know, it's it's true, Larissa, because on the part of the customers, they definitely want your coffee, but they're just worried about ordering and you know if it's going to get to them safely. But you know, all of that and on time. It, and on time. Thank you, Larissa. Okay, we'll now talk to um, Gabby. In your case, many of our Kababayans, actually all of us, not just the Filipinos, but the rest of the world, we were forced to stay at home. Many of us had to change our daily routines, either as a customer or as a consumer. Can you share with us just some of the changes that you had to adapt to and how? what were the, the challenges that you faced? And then how did you turn that around for yourself? Well, Jelly, at the onset of the pandemic, um, we all had to switch to online. And then uh, my family and I are used to going on weekly or bi-weekly groceries. It was mm-hmm. sort of our family bonding. We really loved going to the grocery or going to the mall. So um, come March, when the lockdown happened, everything had to be procured online. So mm-hmm. since I was the youngest, I'm, I'm the youngest in the family, um, I'm the one who's the most tech savvy, so I had to procure for all the goods, all the food, all the restocking of the grocery. So mm-hmm. I had to do it all online. And then for um, all deliveries that had to be made, for example, um, I have to make grab babile. They'd always ask me, Gabi, ano, bilin mo naman to or book mo naman to. And then um, almost every day, grab drivers would always be calling me on my phone. Um, and then whenever my phone would ring, they'd always be like, grab na naman yan. And then that, most, most of the time, um, if you see my contacts list, um, they're all unknown numbers from grab drivers. <laughs> so, they're my ano best friends. So, um, so, I'm very thankful um, that there's grab because it allowed me and my family to be safe in our homes. Um, actually, since March, never pa kaming lumalabas ng house to go out for groceries. That's true. So, um, very particular to me about that. So um, with that came the challenge um, of worrying about how our deliveries or our parcels were handled, um, mm. if they'd handle it properly, ganyan. Um, so I would, w- there was one time um, that I saw one of the riders actually spray alcohol before touching touching the uh, no, the food I ordered yeah. from Grab Food. So when I saw that, I said, oh my God, buti na lang. Because mm-hmm. syempre, it's scary because you don't know how um, they handle it. And then yeah. there was there was also this one time. I was stuck in, um, I was stuck in traffic. And then I saw a grab driver. I mean, he was just you know, sitting in his motorcycle. And then he mm-hmm. just randomly sprayed alcohol. He had the big bottle with him. So, <laughs> so I was like, okay, so I hope he does that with all his deliveries. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, it, it generally addressed my challenge of worrying of how my parcels were handled. You know, the Grab Riders, I've got to say, they are our unsung heroes. And I'm pretty sure many of many of the viewers here would agree with me on that one. Because how could we have survived the pandemic if they were not in existence? If they were not subje- putting themselves out there? Can you imagine? All of us had to stay home. But for the Grab Riders, because they needed to make sure that we got our packages, our um, orders, we got our Ubich cheese pandasal na sobrang nauso nung pandemic lahat ng yun they put themselves out there they just had to ensure that they were protected as well and not just the customers as well as our packages ito naman ngayon si Certino kasi he's not a grab rider now the government had to suspend public transportation and grab was a part of it how did that affect your li- livelihood as a driver partner and what were some of the changes that you experienced since then and concern talaga ako Certino knowing fully well that you have eight kids to feed Certino 
Well, during the, I remember that time during, it was April when they mm -hmm. uh, started to, uh, when they suspended the, the grab services. Mm -hmm. um, during that time, po, um, I again stepped up um, being a driver leader. Mm -hmm. um, una kong naisip yung mga drivers mawawala ng income. Mm. Lastly, naisip ko rin yung sarili ko, mawawala ng income. Pero, since, um, it's like God um, gave me so much mm. blessings um, and madiskarte po ako, I was able to find a way for my members being a grab uh, uh, mm. driver leader and my family, for my kids, uh, I found a way to serve Grab and, uh, of course, um, the people in the surroundings. Na we were able to, I was able to secure the project to handle the distribution of uh, rice mm. for uh, 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 relief goods for Grab drivers. So, with doing so, I thought of a way to give work to my members. And um, I got a lot of them to work during that time, even though I know you mentioned, uh, someone mentioned about not being able to go outside the house. Yeah. Again, it's a blessing from God that we were provided with a special ID. It's uh, like a, something that would make or would allow you to pass through the checkpoints. And it's a purpose of uh, emergency. And yeah. those IDs, uh, there's a certain group that um, we assign to handle, like uh, if someone gets uh, to have a mishap on the road yeah. or um, an accident. And so that ID served the purpose because we were allowed to pass through the checkpoints. Therefore, bringing the relief goods to wherever it needs to go to yeah. and also service for employees. Mm. Since that during that time, uh, transportation was not uh, that easy to get. Mm. It's uh, you need to go to a municipality, to secure a clearance. The driver likewise needs to have the clearance for you to just to trans to travel to someplace else. Mm. But we, uh, my members, we were able to earn during the pandemic. And it's a Bayanian stuff. We did not mm -hmm. charge the company a big amount. Mm -hmm. It's just something to suffice the gasoline and food for mm -hmm. the family. Mm -hmm. So during that time, uh, when you were asking about the hardship, of course, being a leader, uh, the first thing I think about is my members. Mm -hmm. So I was able to provide, for although it's not all of them, but for mm -hmm. some, and... Uh, the that the the me being granted that responsibility i'm proud to say that i was able to meet it thank you very well said, Sir Tino. Alam niyo, nakakatuwa po kasi nung nag, simula kayong magkwento, sinabi niyo, nung nag in yung lockdown, in-announce na suspended na ang mga ang public transportation, inisip mo kagad, naku, paano yung mga driver ko mawawala ng trabaho? Sandali, ako rin pala. It was a very selfless way of looking at it. And it's nice. Parang actually sa kwento niyo, Sir Tino, parang hindi niyo masyadong naramdaman yung effects ng pandemic. Kasi go pa rin kayo, gaya ng sinabi niyo, you stepped up. But this is what I want to know though. How did technology, kasi... Nowadays, it's really all about technology. Technology is what's keeping all of us connected. Technology is what's helping us deal and cope with this pandemic. And if you think about it now, technology is also what's helping us move forward and thrive. In your case, the Mansertino, how did technology help you, Paul? Technology, it's the Grab app itself. Mm. It's a, uh, well, it really helped a lot, um, especially you being able to um, transport people mm. and you don't need to like uh, uh, ride a tricycle 
um, go outside the subdivision and then wait for a taxi cab. Yeah. This is just this is uh, by um, internet. You book mm. a car. The car goes to your house. Yes. And then you get to be picked up and brought to your destination. Mm-mm. But uh, in terms of also ordering food, mm. there, that's uh, really something that uh, technology has really helped in uh, bringing food to the... Like for me, I also, when I'm on the road, uh, as I mentioned, I don't go home normally every day. Mm-hmm. sometimes two three days i book and deliver and have a uh, grab food driver <laughs> deliver food to my kids especially my wife of course she's nagging and wants me to go home i order stuff and have it brought to her mm-hmm. in terms of uh, in, an, in 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 addition uh, technology dealing uh, with uh, this with grab and even during the pandemic it really helped a lot. And now we're back. We're already able to drive people. But uh, the thing I'm only sad about is not all the grab drivers are back yet. Uh, it's slowly but surely, but mm-hmm. it, it's near half. half. Mm-hmm. So, of course, I'm wishing by December that all the grab drivers are able to go back to the road. Okay. Thank you. Well, we are hoping for the same thing. Thank you so much for that, Certino. Yes, it is indeed the app, the app itself and the convenience that it offers. Now, I want to talk to Larissa because Miss um, Grace mentioned earlier that if you don't have digital presence yet, that is something you definitely need to work on at this time and age. In your case, you were always online. Your business was always digital. What was the inspiration behind that? How important do you think it is right now for businesses to go online? And can you share with us what was your main consideration for going online and in choosing which platform to be in? So I think um, before the pandemic, a lot of people, especially more traditional businesses, Mm. saw uh, going online as kind of just a way to have like an online calling card. You know, it's Mm. just a way to get information out there, um, to have awareness of some sort. Uh -uh. But I don't think people really saw online or online channels, online platforms as a way to generate sales and really to Mm. connect um, to your customers more than just awareness, but really in a sales generating way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, As I mentioned a while ago, my my main consideration really for setting up and being online um, right from the start was because there were just a lot of things I could not afford as as an entrepreneur who was just starting. You know, I couldn't afford like my own space in a mall. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when we did decide to go online, we really saw the benefit of that. Um, after two years, now in 2020, because when people went online and started looking for, you know, where can I get coffee, like on Grab Food or mm-hmm. on, on, on Facebook, on Instagram, we were already there and we already had a customer journey that was set up in such a way that uh, our, our customers could get the coffee without any contact from us, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the main thing that we had to really do was just um, to make sure we, we would go cashless. And okay. if you are a user of Grab, you'll see that with Grab Pay, it's super easy to do that, yes. right? Um, but also, uh, to answer your question, Jelly, about like the platforms that, that I choose, yeah. uh, when people, um, for example, there's probably someone who's listening to this right now, and it's, for example, like a home baker or is creating a good, right, from their, from their home, and, and they want to go online. They want to be able to, like what I was saying a while ago, reach their customers in a sales-generating mm-hmm. way. Sometimes it gets overwhelming to think like, oh, I have to create a website. I have to set yes. up all of these things. Um, but Added what's cost. Good is there, exactly. But what's mm-hmm. good is there are actually tools that are available for people to just onboard themselves in existing online platforms, such as, mm-hmm. for example, Grab Food. Um, if, if you're, if you're again, like a home baker, it's so easy now. Grab makes it so easy for you to, to apply 
to become a merchant, you just need to set, uh, send your documents and they just process it for you. And so I think for me, uh, a consideration really is what is the most cost efficient way for you to do your entire customer journey end to end um, without having to cough up a lot of capital? Yes. And there are platforms that do that right now. Um, one of which is Grab. But yeah. another thing also is really to be where your customers are at. When I was starting okay. the Dream Coffee, all I had really was, an, so it was a web shop. The mm-hmm. more I did business, the more I saw that, oh my gosh, people use their apps to, to order coffee. And so I went on board Grab Food. Now that um, it's um, the time of pandemic and people are always scrolling on Facebook <laughs> and Instagram more than yes. usual. Nakita ko na parang, oh my gosh, some people don't even go to websites anymore. They're just on social media. And so sure. I had to, you know, create a Facebook shop, an Instagram shop. And so yeah. for entrepreneurs, um, just two things for me. One is to find the most cost efficient way for you to do, um, to go on board online, whatever that is that can pr- provide you with like, again, an end to end resource to connect to your customer. And the second thing is to not stop growing online. Once you're there, it becomes so much easier to look for different tools and to go where your customers are at. Mm. You know, Larissa, what I, one thing I'm noticing about you is that aside from the fact that you were ahead of the times because you were already digital, you had your website, that's how you were conducting business. You're also very observant and you're adaptable because you observe that a lot of people are on these platforms. They don't even navigate websites anymore. Let me get into that those platforms. It's like you you you're always in tune with the times and you'll adjust to it right away. That's amazing. Thank you. And I think also for anyone who is watching this, you know, I, a lot of people feel like, you know, I don't have enough money to start a business. Mm. But what's really important is what you're saying, Jelly, is that we just become teachable through this, this yeah. thing. Like no one really knows, right, what, what mm. we're doing <laughs> all the time. But for you to just take one step forward, to make a small decision, um, it, you'll see in the long run, it can create a bigger impact for what you're doing right now. Very inspiring. Thank you for that, Larissa. And now, finally, we've got Gabby. You know, Gabby, technology and digitalization is quite prevalent now. Everyone, somehow you need to learn technology, whether you like it or not. I'm pretty sure at the start of the pandemic, you said, since ikaw yung youngest, ikaw yung pinaka tech savvy, I think by now, mas marami na kayong tech savvy sa bahay nyo, no? <laughs> Hindi na lahat dependent sa'yo. Natuto na rin sila. They force themselves. Now, with many apps and platforms for consumers to choose from, has the pandemic changed the way that you view technology? Yes, actually, Jelly, the pandemic definitely changed how we view technology because before it was just all about the convenience of Mm -hmm. um, everything that could be done online. But now with technology, um, it paved the way for us to live our lives safely because we've been living um, into this lockdown for months. Mm -hmm. So we really did leverage on that so-called rise of technology. So even if we're very reliant now on technology, definitely not in a negative way. Um, It helps us to be safe and to move forward with everything that we do in our lives. So before, we would um, drive through traffic, pay for parking, um, go around the mall just to get one or two things. But now you can um, just unlock your phone, hit hit, um, click a few times, and then you're good. You just have to sit back and wait for your delivery. So um, with that, we are like living in an era of add to cart or check out. So very easy na lang to purchase everything online. It also becomes easy for you to um, share stuff with your friends or your family. Um, like as you mentioned earlier, um, it's not just me now who's um, familiar with how to purchase things online. I actually taught my Lola how to um, use <laughs> it. It was actually hard during the start. Like, it was she couldn't pick up how to um, order, how to mm. um, load up her grab pay because um, as much as possible, we don't like to do cash transactions anymore, yeah. both for our safety and the safety of our riders. Yeah. But when we hand over the delivery, we can do it just from afar. True. So, 
So it's not just me who's tech savvy now, even my Lola. Sometimes she'd order food for us without telling oh, me anything. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, I shared my knowledge with them and they're very much um, happy with how convenient things are now due to technology. That is such a cute uh, cuento you have, Gabby. Na lola mo na yung nag-order. Nagugulat na lang kayo. Meron na siyang in-order. O, oh, diba? But uh, one last question right here. As a consumer, what were the key considerations that you had in choosing exactly which platform to use to cope with the many changes brought about by COVID-19? Like, sa dinami-dami ng mga platforms, Jen, what made you choose Grab? Well, for that, what made me choose Grab is just definitely um, two things. One is the convenience that everything, almost everything talaga is on the app, from grocery to food to supplies to especially Grab Pabili. And then second would be the handling of the deliveries or the parcels. Um, mm. So what really um, changed my perspective of receiving deliveries, especially at the onset of, of the pandemic, was... Um, Alcohol, very important talaga yung alcohol. Whenever I'd see um, the riders spraying alcohol, it makes me breathe a little na parang, okay, I'm, I'm safe. Uh-huh. So very important talaga yun. And um, it, it really made a big impact on me. Um, so even if social distancing with the riders, um, I still try to talk to them in as much as I can, especially from afar. Uh-huh. So I got to know um, particularly one rider who who somehow um, shifted talaga my perspective and raised my respect for riders because he was sharing his story on how the pandemic really affected his family na wala na silang pambayad ng internet, which is very important since um, technology is um, our life nowadays. True. So, nung, nung nakausap ko siya, sabi ko, grabe talaga. They really got um, heavily impacted by this pandemic. So, mm. with every transaction that I do through the app, um, I know that I am making a difference in the lives of the riders and the drivers as well. Thank you for that. I have a few more questions for everyone this time around, especially since we are now in a at a phase of economic recovery. Do you feel each of you as a merchant, as a customer, as a grab driver, do you feel that we are ready for economic recovery as a country? And please tell us why or why not. Can we start with you, Sertino? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> be more than happy. Okay, well, we're now, we're ready. Okay, I can feel it. In terms of uh, uh, the safety protocols mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that you need to do on every trip, uh, you kailangan talagang sundin. Others, they really don't mind about it. They just sit pretty inside the car and then let the passenger go inside. Uh, here's my pattern, just so I can share what I've been doing. Mm. When I arrive, I message the passenger that I'm here. So mm. quickly, when I see that I'm about to hit the, the pickup point, I bring my... Um, this one, the alcohol, <laughs> go down the car, and then open the door for the passenger, mm. and then spray alcohol inside on the knob, and then uh, just um, after doing that, I'll just say, tell the passenger, let me do this for you, okay? And then wow. I'll close the door, and then when I go aboard the car, um, I also tell the passenger, ma'am or sir, when the uh, we reach the destination, I'll also open the door for you. Don't hold the knobs. Okay. So, in, in that means, well, I'm able to get those five-star trips. Okay. And, uh, well, that's really what we need. To, it's, it's really what we need to do. And it's the directive of the government agencies. Mm. So, you also need to protect yourself, wear your face mask. Mm. And uh, also get to spray alcohol on your hands again. And, uh, well, so far, that's what I've been doing routinely on every trip. Okay. Thank you. And also adding up, it's communication. 
Mm. That's the most important thing. When you see the passenger, just get to say, I'll open it for you. Even though um, it, you, it, she, he or she cannot hear you outside, just yeah. say that and then go down and then you'll open the door for the time. Okay. Galing. Thank you so much for that, Sertino. That is his contribution to economic recovery. Like, how else can I make this uh, trip more pleasant for the person who is writing and acquiring my service? Thank you for that, Sertino. I think ngayon lahat hahanapin. Paano ba pwede i-request? Pwede bang i-request si Sertino ang maging grab driver ko? Okay, what about for you, Larissa? Um, do you think we're ready for economic recovery? Um, for me personally, Jelly, my take on this is we have to be ready. I think, um, it's, honestly, um, this is not my personal experience, but just, you know, watching the news and hearing stories from Pinoy's across the nation, yeah. uh, seguro one of the things that they express is, fine, okay, like, maybe hindi ako magkahasakit or mamatay sa COVID, pero I, I can die from, like, not having enough money. To, yes. to feed my family or to pay the bills at home. And mm. so I guess for me, um, I, I just feel in general that e economic recovery and safety, these two things do not have to op oppose each other. I think it's a false dichotomy to think that way, that we can recover as a nation and still stay safe. And how can we do that? Um, I want to echo what uh, Sertino was saying about really just working together, the importance of working together communicating and just following and um, complying with all these rules and regulations that are set up for us to, to be able to move forward. So that's very important. And the other thing is, um, I know Ms. Grace touched on this also a while ago, um, this idea of bayanihan. Uh, mm -hmm. Sa totoo lang, at this time, meron talagang mga nanalo dahil sa pandemia, you know, because of the, the business or whatever industry they are in, it mm -hmm. has helped them thrive. Uh, yeah. But and, and the, on the flip side, there's really a lot of people that are na talo talaga sa pandemya yeah. And I think it's also up to us as Filipinos and as a nation to help those who, who were more than affected than, than we were, right? And to really, again, work on this together, be collaborative, um, not have industries like fight each other and say, no, dapat ito lang yung masasagot and mm. forget about the, the other industry. But it, it really requires us, like, pulling together and, and coming together to, to make this happen. And I think it's an uphill battle, definitely. But again, if we're coming together, it, it, it is possible. I believe it's possible. Nung sinabi mo, it's going to be an uphill climb. It is not going to be easy. Parang naririnig ko yung boses niyong dalawa ni, ni Sir Tino na pag nasanay na kayong gawin yung mahirap, you're already used to doing the hard things. It is going to be easy. Gabby, in your case, as a customer, as a consumer, what what are your thoughts on economic recovery? Well, for me, um, to add to what Sir Tino and Larissa said, um, we are ready for economic recovery because we have to be. Um, with everything now at their fingertips, um, Somehow life is becoming easier for us, um, despite all the challenges that we all had to go through, um, the emotional, the emotional roller coaster ride that we all had to experience. Altogether, um, it all all boils down to our respect for one another, um, more than just um, looking after ourselves. It's um, becoming more of um, looking after one another, like a symbol of respect. Before was um, saying po and opo, but now it's also um, wearing a face mask. Um, it's, it's, it's also now a sign of respect that if you're not wearing a face mask, um, people would somehow not want to talk to you or yeah. not want to interact with you. So um, with that, everyone has now become more um, compliant with all the safety protocols. Um, mm -hmm. almost, almost a year into the pandemic, um, it has, I think, become second nature for us to um, spray alcohol, practice yes. social distancing, um and everything else in between so um i'd say we are living um in an era where um second nature na lang talaga yung safety protocols before people who would um not go out without alcohol who can survive a day without alcohol in their bag para yeah. ngayon, it's like our oxygen and, 
So parang when you're outside without alcohol, you feel so unsafe. But yeah. um, we all got used to that now. Um, we're definitely on the road to economic recovery. Thank you for that, Gabby. Again, a question for all of you. What role do you think technology and startups play in helping our economy get back on track? Because now we've it's, it's unanimous. Everyone's agreeing. Economic recovery, whether we are ready or not, we need to be ready, just like Larissa said. So what role can technology and startups actually play in helping us be on track for economic recovery? Can we start with you, Gabby? Um, with that, I think what transpired during um, the pandemic is the rise of small businesses, of mm. small entrepreneurs who have um, long been dreaming of starting up their own business. And now with little to um, no barriers to entry, um, we are helping the community one way or another by offering the products or our services all online. Um, yeah. As what Larissa mentioned earlier, we are constantly scrolling on our phones, um, even making purchases on the app itself without having to go um, to an actual website. Mm -hmm. So um, with the bayanihan that we see from small businesses, um, more consumers are now more keen to buying from small businesses because yeah. we believe that with every purchase, they are making a difference in an everyday um, person's life. Um, yes. So with that, um, if we continue our habit of supporting um, our friends, our families, our friends of friends who are starting up their own businesses to just get through this very difficult time, especially um, to, it's very hard now to make a living, to earn profit with all the restrictions. So um, yeah, with um, small businesses, small steps all together make a, create a big impact to the economy. You to everyone who's watching, count the number of ube cheese pandesas and sushi bakes that you consume during the pandemic. That goes to show that you definitely have the bayani and spirit, right? <laughs> what about you, Sortino? What 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 do you think technology and startups? Uh, what roles do you think it can play for economic recovery? Well, um, the most important thing or the word is transport or where you bring stuff to other locations. Yeah. Um, it's not like um, way back before you need to pass through a certain uh, office and then request uh, a delivery. Now it runs through mm. the app. It And also um, the technology can be of big help right now in prevention. Mm. Um if you realm around, um, there's a huge chance for you to acquire the COVID-19 virus. So if you're, if we talk about transportation, mm. um, uh, the grab, the, the, just the word grab, it really get, it, you, you already know the answer when you say grab. So just need to hold your phone and then find the address where you want to have things delivered to or transported to. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to risk yourself driving on the road. Well, mm -hmm. thinking about what I've said, I've been driving on the road for the longest time. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's God will not allow someone with huge responsibility to get mm -hmm. sick. So that's the only <laughs> thing I can say. So, the um, bottom line is, right now, we're so lucky to have this technology yeah. and uh, we can really bring people or bring stuff to wherever it needs to go to. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Tino. Yes, absolutely agree with you on that. It's making it possible to just move around products and people without any problems or hassles. Larissa, what about for you? For me, um, like what I was saying a while ago, Jelly, um, economic recovery and safety can go hand in hand. And I, I believe that the bridge to those two things is really technology. You yeah. know, that it's still possible to, to kind of like make sales and also to help one another through, by, by, by not really being in physical contact with someone, mm -hmm. but just using your devices to get what you need to keep, um, the economy running, right? And and I just believe that technology is so important with that. Yes, um, I agree with Sertino. Uh, 
apps where it's a one-stop shop like Grab really helps with that. But all of the other things that I'm seeing lately is, for example, it's easy, it, it's it's much easier now to book, for example, like uh, medical appointments um, through apps on your phone and um, to, to schedule everything in advance just so if for whatever reason it is very essential for you to step out of your house, you can just go in and go out. And so technology is not just making us safe. For me, technology is also making our lives so much easier. The things that we used to, um, you know, spend so much time before waiting on now mm -hmm. because of because uh, businesses and um, organizations in general are just forced to plan better, to use technology to maximize their planning better. Um, it becomes easier also for the average Pinoy to do what he or she needs to do in, in a particular day. And yeah. um, I hope, hope that, you know, when we recover together as a nation, um, it will also help us kind of like be more efficient with how we do our things. And True. technology is just like super. It's the key for that. It's the bridge to those things. You know, it's interesting, Larissa, that you, you said that because I'm also realizing now, and I'm pretty sure this is um, a sentiment shared by a majority that, I think the one thing this pandemic made us realize is that we can be a lot more productive because there are many things we can actually just do from home. The yeah. like like you said, uh, meetings, doctors consultations, parang you don't even need to go anywhere. You don't need to subject yourself through traffic and waste time in traffic. A lot of things are now possible just from the comforts of your own home and technology is responsible for that. So yay for technology. Thank you so much. One final question for everyone. And I'll throw this first to Larissa. If there is one innovation that you would like to see in the future, especially since we are, you know, getting bombarded with a lot of new technology that's making our life easier, definitely more convenient. What is that one innovation for you that you would like to see in the future and how important is that? For me, um, so when I joined, um, again, Grab MBC, it was before the pandemic. And I didn't realize that, according to Ms. Gray's presentation a while ago, that there are actually so many tools for people to, to start up a business now in a very cost-efficient way, right? So um, my answer to that really is I wish there was a one-stop shop where people could just uh, uh, set up their business and do and, and have all of the tools that they need in that one place. I mm -hmm. believe Grab has a program for that. But in addition to that, for me, it's also very important that in the back end, right, um, all of these things are also being taken care of. So what do I mean by that? Uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, when they start up businesses, I'd like to believe really want to do it properly. And so, yes. you know, they want to have the right registration for it, the mm -hmm. right documentation for it, apply it with their LGU and so forth. And so uh, my hope is that, our government would also um, have that desire to innovate and innovate quickly so that when it comes, for example, to applying for my business permit for 2021 mm -hmm. or applying my taxes or all of these things that are super important to keep um, the nation going, that we can also do these things online. And you know yeah. what, Jelly, like I would just love it someday if there was um, an entrepreneur who would start out and she could, he or she could just do everything from her device, right? Like apply yes. for her business permit, apply for her LGU registration, and then mm -hmm. submit that to uh, a private um, sector app like Grab. And then Grab mm -hmm. will process that. And then in a matter of days, you could just have like your online store with all the right documentation um, working behind that. So that would just be so amazing for me. I hope in the future that would be available to more of us. You know what, Larissa, I can already see our viewers busy jotting that, that idea down. <laughs> they want to be in on it before anybody else, and they got the idea right here at the Philippine Startup Week. So thanks for that suggestion, Larissa. That is a fantastic suggestion, all right. What about you, Gabby? What is that one innovation that you're thinking of? Now, sana meron tayo nito, and how important is that to you? Well, as a consumer, one thing that um, I would want to have in the future would be a sort of drive-through grocery concept, where now okay. since we've gotten very used to um, doing our groceries online, um, to sort of give back that grocery experience um, 
um, it would be good to like have to just drive through um, a shop and then you can just scan everything that you need and then you can just mm -hmm. check it out without without having to interact with anyone without having to touch anyone while still getting your um, grocery experience so um, with that it allows us to make use of our time more productively especially with how fast-paced um, life is nowadays um, it would be a good way for us to manage our time wisely okay Kunyari pa akong viewers yung nagja-jot down ng notes, ako pala eh, no? <laughs> Pero what Gabby found out this week, and I think I came across um, something like that in another country where they already had a drive through grocery system. But yeah, it's about time that we had that in the Philippines as well. Sir Tino, para sa inyo naman, ano naman yung nai-imagine yung kailangan meron na tayo na to? Well, um, with me, I um, I think my answer will be different from the two pretty <laughs> ladies that I have we have here, uh, or three. <laughs> uh, let's have three, including Yama. Well, um, what I'm dreaming is, uh, um, I hope we would have the grab bus Ooh, nice. in the future. Okay, it's a, it's some, it's some, it's a certain vehicle that can get. Um, like 40 people inside one one mm -hmm. one vehicle like that and then also it will have a small store at the back uh, a comfort room mm -hmm. we're in a, so so that for people that cannot afford um uh, the the price mm -hmm. for grab car mm -hmm. or grab yeah. six seater they can just uh, do the point to point even if it's uh and i would like to also see it do the provincial routes yeah. Yeah. like for example manila to Laguna, it's uh, they will ride the bus according to their time. They will also book it using the app, mm -hmm. and it's something that I would like to have in the future. If I can own a Grab bus, mm -hmm. I will be a millionaire in one year. <laughs> no, no, it's not about earning. It's about helping people go places at a uh, minimal expense. Ang ganda Thank ng you. idea ng yon, Sir Tino. I'm loving all of your ideas. Very creative indeed. We're about to wrap up this panel, but right now I just want to ask one final message from all of you. What? How would you sum it all up? What is your message to all of our viewers here at the Philippine Startup Week with regards to technology and starting their own businesses? Let's start with you, Sir Tino. Certino, Certino, ano po yung final message nyo po para sa ating mga, para sa lahat ng mga nanonood ngayon? Okay. Uh, the final message. Well, we know what we're into right now. Um, we're uh, in a pandemic. And uh, I would also want to stress out the, uh, the message that, for everyone to try to find ways for you to to be able to produce or to be productive and also it's like every day please don't forget that god wake us woke us up so thank god every day and also don't also bear in mind that every day might be your last day so do something productive or help yourself and be a good provider to your family. So this this segment that we have right now, this stressed out the point the the um, the topic about transportation, technology, prevention, grab protect or things. But the most important thing here is just do whatever is right and try your best to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sertino. Larissa, what are your final uh, for words? Me, for me, Jelly, so I guess everyone who's watching this right now is um, an entrepreneur or would like to be an entrepreneur here at Philippine Startup Week. And really, my main advice is really just not to be afraid to start. A lot of businessmen and women have a vision for how they imagine their lives or other people's lives to be in, for example, 10 years or 20 years. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get so overwhelmed with that 10-year, 20-year plan. 
that it, we get crippled to to make a small decision, um, like what Sertina was saying, which means sometimes it means like waking up um, earlier than normal. So before you report for your nine to five job, you have a couple of hours to plan out a business plan for what you want to do, right? So for me, it's really just that. Um, don't be afraid to make small but very important decisions as early okay. as now. And um, don't be afraid to, to start small. Just make small steps, small decisions that will help you achieve that big vision you have down the line. Thank you, Larissa. Very well said. Finally, Gabby. My message for my fellow consumers, which I, I believe is almost everyone here, um, is yeah. to support small businesses. Um, yeah. Whenever we make purchases of food, our favorite ube pandesal, our favorite sushi bake, always consider um, supporting one another so we promote bayanihan and we make a big difference in everyday people's lives because um, all together these um, small businesses doing um, small efforts um, ultimately creates a big impact on um, various industries um, which will help um, one another thrive into hopefully big businesses in the future. Thank you for that, Gabby. Ladies and gentlemen, a virtual round of applause, please, for all of our panelists, for Gabby De Salas, Larissa Hosson, and Tino Salvador. The three of you were absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for joining us and for inspiring all of the startups and soon to be startups. Thanks for all of your words of encouragement. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. We all had key takeaways on how Grab has been supporting MSMEs, drivers, and users to adopt digitalization towards economic recovery. And this has been a true testament to how Grab and its community can continue to support one another throughout the pandemic and beyond. An absolute pleasure and honor being with all of you today. My name is Jelly Victor, your host and moderator for today's Philippine Startup Week's Grab Discussion on Recovering Together Through Innovation and Technology. Again, thank you to our panelists. That's Gabby, Larissa, and Tino. Thank you, Miss Grace Vera Cruz. And of course, to all of you, our audience, for taking part in this session. And with that, have a great day ahead and always stay safe.